can help build your child's mathematics and logical reasoning skills right when your child is just a few months old. You don't have to wait for your child to go to school to learn 24 plus 46 to begin their mathematics skill education at home. First step to be able to master math is not dealing with numbers. The first step is to help your child reason and think critically. So what kind of activities can you do, especially during the lockdown period with the limited resources that you have? Uh, so here are a list of three or four activities that can work very beautifully for children under the age of five. The first one that you could do is something that works very comfortably for children who are around three years of age. Uh, younger children can also attempt it as long as they can hold objects firmly in their hand and work with them. So to begin with, if you have two large rings like a hula hoops, you could use that. Um, if you don't, you could just take a big chart and two different colored sketch pens and draw two circles. These are Venn diagrams like what you may have learned later in your school. Um, with the two circles which need to overlap at for, for a small area. On one circle, you could write slide. On another circle, you could write roll. And on the area that is overlapped by both the circles, you could write slide and roll. The child may not be able to read, which is perfectly okay. You just need to say the word slide and the word roll and what is there in between the slide and roll. And next, you begin by collecting a few objects that you already have at home. Use simple objects like your child's pencil, eraser, a ruler, glass jars or plastic jars at home, boxes, cartons. Um, you could also use your child's toys but avoid using soft toys which do not have a single straight edge. It becomes very confusing for a child to work with to figure out whether this object can slide or roll. So any of your chi child's toys which have uh, slay straight edges or circular edges would work beautifully. Next, try and create a plank in your house with whatever material that you have. If you have a piece of wooden board, fantastic. If you don't have a piece of wooden board, you could just take any large cotton and cut it off in a, in a slant so that it mirrors that of a plank. Now give your child all the objects that you've collected. Ask them to slide or roll each of these objects. If the child is able to see that object sliding, the child puts that object inside the slide part. If it can only roll, they put them only in the roll part. If they think it can do both, they put it in the slide and roll part. Now what is important here is not that your child gets the characteristic of sliding and rolling correct. It's imperative that they are able to explain their reasoning to you why they think that object can slide or roll. So there is and uh, children may not have the requisite vocabulary to be able to express their thoughts. So there's a child, a three and a half year old child I, I work with who once told me, uh, auntie you know this glass jar can both slide and roll because this side is like this and this side is like this which is perfect we do, we cannot expect a child who is three three and a half years old to be able to say auntie this object can slide and roll because it has both circular edges and flat edges that's probably vocabulary that they will be exposed to after they are seven so for now, if the child can just express their opinion and justify why they believe it works fine, is perfect. So the skills that you are helping a child build are A. Sorting different objects based on different characteristics. Understanding the characteristic of sliding versus rolling. And being able to visually represent the, uh, uh, a sorting of an object inside a Venn diagram. You could extend this sorting to not just sliding and rolling as characteristics. You could even use uh, Venn diagrams to sort objects based on colors. You could open up your child's wardrobe and you could create, don't go beyond two circles. It's just too difficult for a child to understand yet. You could write red on one side, green on another and write red and green in the central part. 
and ask your child to take out their clothes and put those that have red on them, those that have only green on them, and those that have both red and green on them. What do you then do if a child has a dress which is yellow in color? Where do they learn to place that? That's the next step. They've got to place it outside of either of these two circles, which is when they understand that the universal set of clothes or of colors does not just have to be these two colors. Another skill that you can work with very young children is to develop their ability to reason and make predictions based on whatever information that they have. And this works beautifully if you're reading a story aloud to your child for the first time. So let's say you take a story of, let's say, Little Red Riding Hood and you start reading the story aloud to your child. At some point midway, stop and ask your child to make a prediction of what they think is going to happen next. So let's say, or you could make a small twist in the story. So let's say Red Riding Hood has just met the wolf on the way and the wolf is asking her, where are you going? And she tells the wolf, I'm going to my grandmother's house. And the wolf asks her, where is your grandmother's house? And then you bring a twist to the story and you say that what if Little Red Riding Hood gave the wolf some misdirections to her grandmother's house? What do you think will happen next to the story? And then the child can go on to reason based on this twist that if there are misdirections given, what can happen to the different characters in the story and how the plot of the story can unfold very differently. I know we are all quite eager to build quantitative skills in our children, so here are a couple of fun activities that you can start working with children who are about three, three and a half years of age. Uh, if your child has never been exposed to the idea of quantity, uh, this is a good way to introduce it. So um, if you have Jenga blocks at home, they would pretty much be perfect. But even if you don't, it's okay. You can work with say Rajma seeds, they will also work very comfortably. So the first exposure to the idea of numbers has to begin with the child understanding that numbers represent quantities and more importantly that quantities have a difference between them. That means not all quantities are equal. So how do you help your child understand this? So you could place one Jenga block on the top and say this is one. And then beneath it, you could place two Jenga blocks next to each other and then say this is two. And then beneath it, you place three Jenga blocks and then you say this is three. The important thing is not for your child to be able to count one, two and three. Rather, the important thing is for the child to understand that three is much longer than one or 3 is longer than 1 and 1 is still smaller than 2. So the connection between the difference in quantities is very very critical that we develop that before your child can even count 5 and 7 with absolute accuracy. So you could keep building on this activity for 1 to 9 and also indicate right on the top you see there is nothing there. So when there is nothing, then we say it's zero. So introduce zero to nine first before you go on to ten. Now for children who already know zero to nine, then you can build the tenth row with ten Jenga blocks and then show them that in the language of mathematics, there are only digits from zero to nine with which we depict all conceivable numbers in the universe. And then you show them how to write 10 and you help them read aloud or say aloud the number 10. From here on, it's the same way as you build 11 to 20 with Jenga blocks where they just learn to see and visually understand that there are differences in quantities. Now, it's pretty much fun for you to then write different numbers on charts and help them, you know, match which row has how many numbers. But it's probably more fun for them to understand that there is a difference between 17 and 11 and they, you can begin exposing them to which is greater and which is smaller. Now, Jenga blocks and Rajma seeds become a little too boring. 
then take your children to objects like maybe your shoe rack in the house which has shoes of many different sizes and you could help your child to understand that all of these objects need to be sorted in size and first let them just visually sort the largest and then the smaller one and a smaller one and a smaller one and then maybe they can even understand that even shoe sizes are based on certain numbers which represent how long or short your feet are. This helps them connect how numbers are used in the real world to represent the number of items. It could also represent measurements of different objects for which we use mathematical expressions. I hope you found this video useful to understand uh, how you could work with your child on logical reasoning and mathematical skills and we really hope that you all don't get too bored or bogged down during this lockdown and you have a lot of fun quality time with your family.